Thank you for joining us. With me now is Obiageli Ezequesli. You are the co-founder of the Bring Back Our Girls um, social media movement. Um, tell us, first of all, how this social media campaign got started. Well, you know, it started, all, all, for me, it started almost immediately um, when 20, the, the, the morning after the girls uh, had been abducted from their, from their dormitory, mm -hmm. the, the news uh, broke yes. uh, on my timeline um, through BBC that um, the girls had been, uh, had been abducted. And so I focused on getting the attention of the government as well as the feedback uh, from the government as to what was being done uh, to rescue them. And um, all through that day, there was nothing from the government. Two days after, nothing still, until the military sort of came out and said, oh, they had rescued some girls. Turned out not to be true. And, you know, so we, I didn't leave the issue. I stayed on it. Um, it my, the first hashtag was, um, where are 85 daughters? Because we thought uh, they were just 85 daughters missing. When in and fact, then there was many more. When there were many more. And then, you know, over time, still nothing uh, in terms of uh, a responsive action uh, from our government. On the 23rd of that April in 2015, uh, 2014, I then hosted an event um, uh, uh, that had to do with reading. Uh, the estate in Nigeria was being inaugurated by the UNESCO as the World Book Capital. And it was at that event that I said to people that they needed to show solidarity with the girls who were still captives and uh, of whom we had not heard anything from our government and that they should join me in saying, bring back our daughters, bring back, you know, uh, these girls, you know, rescue them. Mm -hmm. And the young man who was uh, listening to me uh, on, on, on live broadcast uh, tweeted and said, Auntie Obi says everybody should join in saying, bring back our girls. And so I tweeted and said, everyone join us in saying, bring back our girls. The whole world joined. Did that surprise you? It didn't. Um, the reason it didn't surprise me is that we are in a world where um, more and more, we, we see how much of universal values we all share. And so for anyone who was sitting there in any country uh, uh, that, that had access to social media, yeah. seeing that we had these hundreds of girls you that had gone to school. First, they would, think, they would think, what if this happened to me when I was younger? What if these girls were my daughters? My, yeah, exactly. Oh, what if they were my nieces? What if they were my sisters? So instantly, what would kick in would be your basic humanity. Mm -hmm. And so we saw that in full expression, in the fact that the whole world joined in calling for the girls to be rescued. The tragedy, of course, in fact, the calamity, is that uh, in a few days, it's going to be two years since those yeah. girls were abducted. And we're nowhere closer to finding them than we were when we started the advocacy. So it's quite a, it's a very painful uh, a season for us because yeah. nothing prepared me for the fact that two years after, I would still be talking about rescuing uh, the, the, the 219 school girls. It's a very somber anniversary it, it's too for much. you. It's, yeah. it's too much. You've said that you believe in miracles. I do. Uh, so how do you find the strength to keep going then, given that it's been two years? You know, there is nothing like hope. Hope reigns supreme. You know, hope is eternal. Um, and the, the only thing that happens when a person can no longer hope is that they die. Mm -hmm. So they may live, but they die when there is no longer hope. I just believe that these girls are a story yet to be told. I believe that they will be found. I believe that um, they, they would have a future that would be an example to uh, many around the world that no matter the vicissitudes that life brings upon you, um, you can overcome, you can be triumphant. I think it's that spirit of, 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 the, of, of triumph that, that sort of drives us, that mm -hmm. despite all odds, despite all of the challenges that we've seen, the fact that the mothers of these girls are holding strong. I couldn't even imagine how I would be today if 
any of my own daughters had been in this because they are not my daughters. But the way I feel, I, I, I just can't imagine. Are you, you in know? touch with the mothers of the daughters? Oh, very much so. I mean, it's like an extended family now. Yeah. How, how, do, how are they holding up? Um, That's what I mean. They, this, you know, some of, them, some of them are incredibly strong. But there are moments of, of vulnera you know, complete vulnerability on their part. We've lost already 18 parents of these girls who have died out of being heartbroken. Yeah. Um, you know, it's so, so it, they, 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 they are just, it, it, it's, so, it's so mixed up. You've got this, this hope, you've got this pain, you've got this humanness and humanity, you've got this callousness and wickedness. It's so twisted up together. And, and, and you, you've got to separate these in order to know what emotion uh, you, know, you, should be, you should be holding strongly to. Because that's what keeps us going. And, and I, you know, the thing is to remind the whole world that we cannot afford to give up on 219 young women. They went to get the best thing that world, the world offers, education, knowledge. With education and knowledge, Every woman stands a chance of ruling their world. We can't deprive these girls of that opportunity. We all owe them our voices, and our voices must not keep quiet until those girls are found. You said that the girls were seeking education. What, what else does the world need to know about these girls? What have you learned about them? You know, what I've learned about them is, um, is, is this, is that for many of them, they were going to be the first generation mm. going to school. And you know what that means. Yeah. The first generation that goes to school is the generation that takes the rest of generations with them upward. Because education is the fastest tool of social and economic mobility. And if these girls are first generation graduates for their families, you can imagine what it would do to the issues of uh, maternal mortality, infant mortality, um, you know, vicious cycle of poverty. You know, it's, they would break many barriers simply by getting that education. So we've learned that. We've also learned that some of them had such incredible dreams and aspirations. There is a particular mom. Um, Asana's mom, she always talks of the fact that the daughter said to her, don't worry mom, when I graduate um, secondary school, I will graduate in a way that I can be a medical doctor, uh, I would study medicine, I would be able to take care of you. All of your, wor all of your problems will be over by the time I I'm a medical doctor and taking so she's always crying and saying my daughter wanted to be a medical doctor right I didn't think that my daughter was going to end up with Boko Haram yeah. so she she's not giving up there's another one another mother that says I've got five children um, so four are left but you know in a very in a very strange kind of way I almost feel like my missing child is more important to me than the other four. I mean, it, it, you know, it's, it's what you feel when you're going through pain, you know? So she doesn't mean it in that way concerning the other four children, but it's the fact that she wants her daughter back. Another mother said, you know, some people have said to me, oh, but these girls would have already been damaged beyond repair by the time they return, so why don't you just let go? And she says, I am not letting go. She's my baby. In whatever state you bring her back, I will nurse her back to the person that she's supposed to be. So when you hear these kinds of stories at personal levels, you know, I can't walk away. You have to keep I doing just can't what walk you're away. doing. Yeah. I can't. Of course. There's hope. We have to keep holding on to it.